Hi, my name is David Brown. I'm an applications engineer with Hawk Ridge Systems, and today we're going to talk about the basics of 3D sketching. I have a basic part open here, and I'm going to select the down arrow below the sketch icon in my command manager and select 3D sketch. When I'm sketching in 3D, I like to rotate my environment and do a more isometric view. I'm going to begin this sketch by selecting a center point rectangle. If you notice, my cursor in my screen actually has a big X and Y underneath it and there's a triad on my origin point now that has the Y and X axes highlighted. Basically what this says is that if I begin sketching right now uh, that my sketch entities are going to lie on a plane that is parallel to my front plane or uh, in relationship to an X and Y type orientation. Uh, this is actually not what I want right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to start this over again. And before I begin sketching, I want you to notice, uh, if, if I hit the Tab key, I can change that orientation. And that's the key to remember when 3D sketching is the use of the Tab key. So as you begin to sketch, you want to uh, have a, an understanding of what plane that you're going to be relating this to. And here I want my uh, top plane, or a ZX type orientation. And as you can see, as I begin sketching this, that is exactly what I get. Uh, I'm going to use this rectangle to as a basis for uh, controlling my frame. And so I'm going to turn that into construction geometry, and I'm going to hit Escape. And now I'm going to go ahead and dimension this out. 48 inches. 26 inches. Now I have a basis. Uh, for my frame that I'm going to create. I'm going to go ahead and begin by se selecting a line. Now here I want to begin sketching on this end and what I want to do is I want to tab over to an X and Y orientation and then as I begin sketching it moves that triad over and if you notice the, the inference lines that appear on my screen that shows me that I'm in fact going to be sketching on that plane. So I'm going to go ahead and place a line here, select there, and then I'm going to finish this up by selecting on that endpoint of that existing geometry right there, and that actually adds a coincident relationship to that, tying that down. And now I have some uh, loose geometry here that I need to redefine. And typical of, or specific to, uh, the 3D sketch environment is if I select on this line here, if you notice that I have some new types of relations that I can add. And with this one here, I want this line to be a coincident and running along an X axis. So I'm going to select that. And this one here, I'm going to make this one to go along Y. And that basically finishes or fully defines this with the exception of the distance of this. So what I'm going to do is add a mention on here 30 inches and now basically I've defined uh, the basis of my frame that I'm creating here 48 inches 26 inches wide 36 or 30 inches tall and I'm going to go ahead and begin sketching on the other end and again I want to maintain an X and Y type orientation with this so I'm going to go ahead and sketch relating that to that endpoint there and just throwing this on here like this. And again, <clears throat> I could automatically pick up those relationships, but I just want to show you again that if I can select that line and I can add these relationships very easily, make that a long X. And with this one here, I want this to be the same height as this, so I want this dimension to be controlling that. So I'm going to select this line, control select this line, and as you notice, I have again the same types of relationships that you'd have in a 2D world. I'm going to make those equal, and now I have my, my framework is beginning to take shape, and I have the, the length, width, and height controlling, uh, being controlled by those three dimensions. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some internal structure to this. Select my line tool again, and here I don't need to worry about the orientation because as I lay this, the, this line down, I'm going to select existing endpoints and that will fully define that line. So I don't need to worry about which orientation that I'm, that I'm in. I'm going to go ahead and add this geometry in there. So now that's fully defined. I'm going to add some cross bracing in here. 
select my line tool again and again I don't have to worry about the orientation of my sketch because I'm going to be attaching this line by using existing geometry and here I'm gonna add a coincident relationship to that point or to that line and the endpoint and I'm gonna make that along X and that relationship is also added automatically so here all I have to do is add a dimension to set that at the desired height. Okay, I want to do the same thing on the other end. Pick up my line tool again. Again, put coincident relationships along X relationship automatically. Add another line from this midpoint to that midpoint. And now as you can see that that is free to move and goes along an angle there. I can add angle dimensions, whatever I want, but I want this to be the same height as that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and make that one to go along the z-axis. And that finishes up my frame. Now this is ready to uh, use in a weldment to insert structural members along this frame. In today's video we talked about the basics of 3D sketching. hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel and thanks for watching.